You know, when it comes to prayer, it's important that you learn how to pray with confidence. A and yet, I don't know any other area in life where people feel less confident than in their prayers. Sometimes we feel unsure, insecure, or even wondering if we're praying in the right way. You need to learn how to pray confidently. Now, the confidence I'm talking about is not confidence in your own ability to talk God into doing something he doesn't want to do. No, no, it's confidence in God's ability and in God's willingness to answer your prayers because of who he is. Once you understand what God is really like, your confidence in prayer will soar. Welcome back to session two of 40 Days of Prayer. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, the very first words he spoke were the last words they expected to hear. He said, our Father, our Father. And with just those two words, Jesus broke through all their stereotypes about God. Did you know that in all of the Old Testament, for uh, thousands of years, the word Father is used for God only about a handful of times, and it is never used in personal prayer. In the Old Testament, before Jesus, when people prayed, they prayed to God as their creator, as their deliverer, a uh, healer, provider, uh, even the great and dreadful God. That's a direct quote. And they used many, many other titles, but never in prayer for thousands of years did people refer to God as Father. We only have that because Jesus taught us to do it. Jesus challenged all of that and in fact, Jesus referred to God as Father over 150 times. He really wanted us to get this message. He wanted us to know that God is not simply a power. He's a person. God is not simply a force. He's our Father. Actually, the New Testament word for Father is the word Abba, A-B-B-A, it's not the rock group. It's a fancy formal title. No, 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 it's an endearing expression. Abba actually means Papa. It means Daddy. It's a term of endearment. It, it's a term of love and security and familiarity. And so Jesus is telling us that when you pray to God, our Father in heaven, you're actually talking to your Daddy, your Abba. It's the first words a, a little child in the Middle East learns, Abba, Papa, Dada. It's a very easy word. It means Daddy. Now this can be a hard truth for some people to accept because they had a lousy relationship with their earthly father. So the idea of God as their heavenly father opens up deep wounds and painful memories. What about you? Maybe, you're, maybe your dad was mean to you. Maybe he was unreasonable, maybe he was unreliable, maybe he was abusive, maybe he was absent. And so when you hear the phrase, our father in heaven, you think, well, wait a minute, if God's like my father, no thanks God and you tend to transfer all your hurts and your emotions about your heavenly father onto your, I mean, about your earthly father onto your heavenly father. It's no wonder you don't understand God and it's no wonder you don't feel confident in talking to God. So friends, it's time for you to trade all your previous misconceptions and myths that you may have had about God for the truth about who God really is and what he's really like. Because when you understand what God is really like, you understand the kind of father your heavenly father is. When you truly know him, you're gonna feel more confident in prayer, but you're also gonna learn to love him deeply. And that will radically change your prayer life. It'll enable you to pray with confidence more than ever before. So in this session, let's look at what kind of God is God? What is God really like? What kind of father is he? Well, the best place to find the answers to those questions, of course, is in the word of God. So let's look at four biblical characteristics of God as our father. When you understand what God is really like, your confidence in prayer and talking to God is going to excel. Now, the first thing we know about God is this. God is a caring father. He's a 
caring father. He cares. God loves you more than you'll ever understand. He loves you more deeply and more compassionately than any earthly father could ever love a child because he's perfect. God loves you more tenderly and more faithfully than any earthly mother is capable of loving her child. In Isaiah 49, God says this, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? The answer is obviously no. Then Isaiah continues, though she may forget, I will not forget you. That's God talking about you. Nothing can stop God from loving you. Not your failures, not your attitudes, not your sins, not your stubbornness, not your mistakes, not your faux pas, not your failings. Nothing can stop God from loving you. The Bible says this, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depths, nor anything in all of creation. In other words, not even you, nothing. You can't stop God from loving you. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can't make God stop loving you. You can try, but you'll fail because his love is based on who he is. You know, sitting here on the beach on a beautiful day like this, um, you can feel pretty calm and peaceful. But I've been on the ocean sometimes when storms are raging, and I've been out in boats when the, the seas are very, very choppy, and it can get pretty frightening. That reminds me of one of my favorite passages in the Bible. It's when the disciples were in a boat in the middle of a storm, and Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. Now, get the picture. Does it ever feel like Jesus is asleep in your boat <laughs> and you're going through a storm and the waves are lapping and the boat is rocking and tilting and you're scared to death? You don't have any confidence at that moment. In that moment, the disciples thought they were gonna die. The storm got so bad out there on the sea. So the Bible tells us they woke up Jesus and they said, Lord, don't you care if we drowned? You know, the, the whole thing's, we're all in a storm, we're about to sink, and you're sleeping. You know, that's a question that all of us have asked the Lord at some point. Lord, don't you care? Lord, I'm here drowning. I'm drowning in fear. Don't you care? Don't you care about that doctor's report I just got? Lord, I'm drowning in tears. Don't you care about the mess my marriage is in right now? Lord, I'm drowning in debt. Don't you care about my finances? I, I'm in a hole I'll never get out of. Lord, I'm drowning in anguish. Don't you care about the trouble that my kids are in right now? Lord, don't you care? Are you just sleeping in the boat while, while the storm is about to capsize us? Well, I'll tell you the answer is yes. God cares. Cares about every detail of your life. In fact, he cares even more than you care. God is a caring father. The Bible says this, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Now, in your notebook, your workbook, you might wanna circle the word all in, in, in your study guide. He cares all, about all the things in your life. God cares about your health. He cares about your love life. He cares about your finances. He cares about your kids. He cares about your schooling. He cares about your job, your career. He, he, he cares about your hobbies. There's nothing that God does not care about in your life. The Bible says he even knows the number of hairs on your head, and he knows the original color of those hairs too. <laughs> nothing is too small or trivial for God's attention. In fact, if, if God cares about everything in your life, if something is big enough to worry about, then it's big enough to pray about. You say, well, I don't wanna bring this tiny thing to God. Are you worrying about it? Then it's big enough to pray about. God says, bring it all to me because I care about you. You can pray with confidence. Why? Not because you're a good prayer, but you can pray with confidence because God is a caring father. That gives us confidence in praying. He cares about everything in your life. Number two, the reason you can be confident in his prayers because God's not only a caring father, he is a consistent father. 
You might write that down. God is a consistent Father. God is consistently loving, consistently caring, consistently compassionate. He's consistently dependable. He's consistently reliable. Now, the Bible says this. There is nothing deceitful in God, nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. In other words, God is always faithful. He's always true. He's always available. God says, I, the Lord, do not change. He's not just a caring father. He's a consistent father. That means that even if you turn your back on God, he's not going to turn his back on you. God's love for you is not based on your performance. It's based entirely on his character. And God's character never changes. He's always consistent. That means God's love will never stop. It will never fail. It will never end. Caring and consistent. The Bible also says this. Even when we are too weak to have any faith left, he remains faithful to us. And he'll help us for he cannot disown us who are part of himself. And he will always carry out his promises to us. You know, as a pastor, I've learned that the greatest cause of resentment and rebellion in children is broken promises of the parents. They say, but dad, you promised. Mom, you promised. And when people break their promises, it breaks our hearts. But the Bible says this, God will never go back on his promises. Human fathers are often unpredictable. I'm one, I'm often unpredictable. And some father, fathers can actually be quite fickle. I've actually talked to people who said, you know, Pastor Rick, growing up, I never knew how my dad was gonna treat me. I never knew when I went home if, if he was gonna be silent or violent. I never knew if he was gonna hug me or slug me. I, I never knew if he was gonna just accept me unconditionally or if he was gonna reject me. I just couldn't depend on my dad. It is sad that inconsistent fathers produce insecure children. But God, our Heavenly Father, is a different kind of God and a different kind of father. The Bible says, my God is changeless in his love for me. Did you hear that? Look at that verse. My God is changeless in his love for me. No matter what you do, God's love for you will never change. You can pray with confidence because God is not just a caring father. He knows everything about you and he cares about it, but he is a consistent father. You can count on him. Now there's a third reason that you can be confident in prayer. You don't need to worry. You don't need to stress out. You don't need to get uptight about prayer. And it's because of this. God is a close father. He's a close father. That means he's not distant. He's not an absentee father. He never ignores you uh, or, or tells you to go away. He's not unavailable when you need him. In fact, God promises the opposite. He, he promises to always stay by your side. And in Hebrews 13, five, he says, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not. You see how, how adamant God is about this? I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, or relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Do you remember how many nots and negatives are in that verse? I mean, how can he say it any more strongly? What more will it take to convince you of God's loyalty and God's faithfulness to you? God never stops thinking about you. There is no moment, no second of your life. Before he made you, he thought about you. You were always on his mind. That's why we pray confidently. The psalmist wrote, how precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. They cannot be numbered. I cannot even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. Look at this beach behind me. You couldn't count the number of sands on this beach, much less the sands of all the beaches in all the world. Over and over again in scripture, the Bible compares the vastness of God's love for you to the grains of sand on an ocean beach. 
So every time you go to the beach, I want you to think about how much God loves you. If every grain of sand, you put it under a microscope and you wrote it, or you read it, and it said, I love you, I love you, I love you from God. You still couldn't understand how much God loves you. The grains of sand on a beach represent how much God loves you. Now I want you to consider three encouraging truths about the closeness of God. First, God is never too busy for you. He's just not. He never says, excuse me, uh, take a number, come back later. Uh, there are more important people ahead of you. Uh, the, the lines are jammed, I, I'm busy, I, let me put you on hold. God never puts you on hold. The Bible says this, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. He's always close. And you can come to him at any time, at any time of the day, with any kind of request, and he never gets tired of hearing your voice, hearing your request. That gives you confidence. Second thing, God loves to meet your needs. That's why his name in Hebrew, Jehovah Jireh, uh, is given as one of the names of God. What does Jehovah Jireh mean? It means the Lord who provides. What do you need provided in your life right now? You can come to God with a thousand requests a day with the exact same prayer. You can say it over, God, I need your help again. With that temptation, with that problem, with that fear, with that envy, with that resentment, with that memory, God, I need your help again. I need your help to not be afraid. I need your help to calm my anger. I need your help to know which direction to go. And God never gets tired of taking care of you. The Bible says this, if you then, though you're evil, in other words, you're imperfect, you, we sin, you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? God is close. The third thing that we learn from God's closest is that because he's close, God is sympathetic to your hurts. He's not distant. He's, he's up close so he can see and feel and hear how you're hurting. Some of you had fathers who tried to toughen you up when you're hurt. And when you got hurt, rather than sympathizing and empathizing, they said things like, you know, man, get over it. Quit being a baby. Be a man. Grow up. God does not say that to you. The Bible says this. And if you're in a tough place right now, emotionally, you're struggling with some deep hurt, listen to this verse. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Think about that verse for a minute. It says, God is close to the brokenhearted. Has your heart been broken lately? It says, he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Are you feeling a little put down, crushed, overwhelmed in your spirit? Are you feel a little discouraged and ready to give up hope? If that's you, then you're the one God is closest to. He is close to the brokenhearted. The Bible says it over and over like this verse, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. He never gets tired of comforting you. He's a caring, consistent, and close father. Now there's a fourth reason why you can always pray with confidence, no matter what the situation is, no matter what you feel. The fourth reason we pray, pray with confidence is because God is not just caring and close and consistent. He is competent. God is a competent father. That means God can handle any problem you bring him. There's no challenge beyond his ability. There's no question above his wisdom. There's no need that's gonna exhaust his resources. The Bible says this, nothing is impossible for God. What in your life have you acted like was impossible for God to do? In fact, the Bible tells us Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do far more, circle that, God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our desires, our thoughts, or our hopes. Now think about this, the vastness of this ocean behind me, I'm sitting here on the California coastline, the Pacific Ocean goes all the way over to Asia. 
in that vastness there, the God who created an ocean that vast is able to do infinitely beyond your highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. So think of your biggest problem. Think of your greatest dream. Think of your most daunting challenge that you're facing right now. Think of the biggest fear that's limiting you. Not only can God handle that, God says, I can do more than you can even ask, imagine, or dream of. So let me ask you a very personal question. What are you imagining God can do in your life? Don't limit God. What are you afraid to ask for? What are you afraid to dream of? Don't be afraid. What are, you, what are, your, what are your expectations? God can exceed them all. The Bible says this, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So let's review. The reason we are confident in prayer is four things. God is a caring father. There's never been a time that God did not care about every detail of your life. Two, he's a consistent father. He has never changed in his love. He's not moody or fickle. He is an unchangeable father. He is a close father. And even though you may have run away from him and maybe you're far away from him right now, he's never forgotten or abandoned you, not for a single moment. Just because you don't feel close to God doesn't mean he's not close. God is as close to you as your prayer. And then finally, God is a competent father. There's nothing too hard for him. He can handle every problem you face. And God can do anything, so prayer can do anything. God says, when you pray to me, you're talking to your heavenly father, to your daddy, to your Abba, to someone who loves you. So let me ask you a very important question. I want you to consider this seriously. You may have been in church all your life, or maybe you've never even darkened the door of a church. Are you certain that God is your father? Because not as God is not the father of everyone. God is the creator of everyone, but he's not the father of everyone. Let me explain this. The Bible tells us that God created everybody, that God has a purpose for everybody's life, not everybody lives it, that God uh, wants everybody in his family, but not everybody's in it. You see, God loves you, he made you, he has a purpose for you, he wants you in his family, but you're not in his family. He's not your father until you place your faith in his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, to all who receive him, talking about Jesus, to all who receive Jesus, to those who believe in his name, God gives the right, he gives them the right to become children of God. That's how you get in God's family. When you place your faith in Jesus Christ, you believe and receive, then God becomes your caring, consistent, close, and competent father. Then you can pray with confidence the way Jesus taught us to pray. Jesus prayed it like this, our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. He wants you to start with a father relationship. Now the Bible says this, you are all God's children by believing in Christ Jesus. Have you done that? H have you received Jesus Christ into your life? Have you accepted his gift of forgiveness and his invitation to join God's family? This is where renewal, hope, revival, revitalization starts in your personal life. There's no greater hope than the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And I wanna give you the opportunity right now to make God your heavenly father. He's waiting, remember, he's close, he's waiting. And when you do this, then you can be confident that not only will your prayers be answered on earth, but you're gonna spend eternity with him in heaven in his home. Now you may have been in church all your life, as I said, but to know about God is not the same as to know God. To, 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 to believe in Jesus, I believe the Son of God, well, so does the devil. But you're not gonna find him in heaven. But when you invite him to be your father, your savior, your Lord, then you become a part of his family. Would you like to do that? This 
is the most important moment of your life if you haven't made that decision. And it would be my honor to help you step across the line right now. So I want you to bow your heads with me. And I want you to pray this prayer, okay? Just bow your head. It doesn't matter the words. What matters is the humility of your heart. God responds to humility. So bow your heads and let's just pray together. Say this, dear God, just say that, dear God, I wanna know you as my loving Heavenly Father. I wanna be your child. I wanna be in your family. Thank you that you sent Jesus to make that possible. And so starting right now, I wanna put my faith in your son who you sent to earth to die for me. I don't understand it all, but as much as I know how, I wanna turn from relying on myself to relying on you every moment of my life. I wanna turn from my old ways, my sins, my mistakes, my self-centeredness, and I wanna turn and receive your gift of forgiveness. Thank you for not only being my father, but the fact that you are caring and consistent and close and competent. That's the kind of father you are. And I wanna put my trust in you like I've never done before. And I humbly ask this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, congratulations. I'm so happy for you. You just stepped across. You moved to, from life to eternal life. And the Bible says that God has so many things that he wants to do in your life, and he's gonna do them through your request in prayer. Now, here's an important thing. When you make something, a decision, you, you wanna tell other people about it. I would encourage you to tell your group that in this prayer, that you, you prayed it with me and you stepped across the line. They're gonna, they're, they would love to know that you made that decision. And uh, it's, it's something real about telling them, uh, if I got married, and I, or I, I got engaged, I said, let's don't tell anybody about it. And they said, well, what kind of commitment is that? You need to be proud of the fact that you have a heavenly father who's close and consistent and competent and caring, and he sent his son to die for you. Now, I hope that you all have a great discussion time uh, now with your group. And I'll see you in our next session as we continue to look at 40 days of prayer. God bless you.